Hi, I'm Shan. Welcome to our channel Try to DIY. Today we're going to build this. This coffee table has a few cool features. First of all, it has a integrated power outlet that you can pull out. It also has two hidden wireless charging stations on both edges of the table. But the main feature of this coffee table is that it can become a dining table. Kami and I have a pretty bad habit. We like to eat in front of TV. But the thing is, is that the co usually coffee table are pretty low and we always have to bend down uh, and that was not comfortable for us. So we basically try to find a solution for that and we build our own coffee table that can transform into a dining table. And uh, we try it out and <laughs> it's pretty cool. It changes a lot. And now we can actually eat dinner in front of TV comfortably. And this is why we build this coffee table slash dining table. Okay, let's start. Lumber is very expensive in France. That's why I try to use as much reclaimed wood as possible. I will be dismantling two pallet woods for this project. You don't want to damage your machine, so be sure to remove all the nails. The pallet wood was used for almost a decade and needed to be straightened and flattened again. To make the planks pretty again, I'm going to pass each of them through the jointer to have at least one edge and one face flat and straight. Then a quick pass through the planer to work on the other face of my planks. I'm gluing two of them together because I need my planks to be 1.5 times wider than it is thick. If my planks are 9 cm wide, then I need it to be 6 cm thick. Another quick pass through the jointer to remove the excess of glue. Then I need to rip out the last rough edge on my table saw and will also in the same time rip it to its final width. And now I'm cross cutting it to the final length using my miter saw. I'll be reproducing this joinery that I got from Tamar. You should go and check out her channel, 3x3 Custom, by the way. Link in the description. It looks complex, but it's only two cuts. The secret here is that the first cut depends on the thickness, and the second depends on the width. The first cut is a half lap joint. The second cut is a kind of a double tenon joint that goes through the half lap. The easiest way to make my tenons is to use my table saw. That's why I'm making a quick and dirty tenon jig. Without it, making a tenon over the table saw can be inaccurate and dangerous.
There is something very satisfying to assemble everything and to see that it all fit together. I know it's not perfect and I'm sure that a pro woodworker would probably make fun of me. <laughs> but hey, that was my first journey ever and I felt pretty happy about it. I'm usually pretty bad at getting things square, but here, lucky me, everything was square on the first try. For the corners, I need to cut four 3x3 three three custom squares. I'll be using a different type of lumber called melez to give it some contrast. Now it's the time to glue up everything together. Since my joinery has a lot of gaps, I'll fix it using sawdust and glue. Now time to sand before I slice the angles. Just like Tamar in her video, I'll be using a Japanese saw to cut the angles. I'll send the angles by hand. In the close-up here, you can see that I cut a little bit too much. The triangle should technically stop at the lines. I found a board to make the tabletop from a broken cupboard which is almost at the right dimension but still not quite. Then I sand it to remove the varnish. I need to make an inner frame that will be used as a storage but also to hold the tabletop. Nice, that is a tight fit. Camille and I thought that the fit were too beefy and ugly, so we decided to give it a slight slope by cutting it at an angle. And it actually makes a huge difference. To close the bottom, I used another board from the same broken cupboard, but this time it was slightly too small. But if cut properly, rearranged and glued up, it will work out just fine. I'm adding a small detail by rolling a bevel onto the front facing edge. I'm not screwing them all the way right now because I'll be removing the bottom a lot during the build. Now we'll do the tabletop pattern. Kami made two different designs and we decided to go with this one. I'll let Camille do the layout because she has way more patience than me.
I will only use scrap wood laying around the shop for the pattern and some epoxy. I need to make all my scrap wood the same thickness and width. On the other hand, the length uh, would change and some of them will have some 45 degree angles too. Time to glue all of it to the tabletop. I try to do it slowly and as precise as possible. Then I put some weight overnight while it dries. I don't know why, but at that point I realized that I totally didn't glue the four angle. So I'll have to do that really quickly in a few after I trim the edges. A quick trim with my multi-tool and a quick hand sand all over the table. I'm rounding a bevel all around the bottom to facilitate the motorized movement of the table. Because the mechanism will move up and forward at the same time. I don't know it right now, but this won't be enough, it won't work well. I'll have to make some adjustment later on. You'll see what I mean. Camille is applying a thin layer of clear epoxy. This will help to prevent the epoxy to be soaked in the wood. We've let it dry for 12 hours, then came back to start the real pour. I'm using a combination of duct tape and wooden blocks to hold the epoxy. This was actually our first time using epoxy and it was very exciting. sanding and filling the gaps again. And then, I don't show it on camera, but I sanded the tabletop again from 80 grit and gradually went up to 1000 grit, just to make sure that the epoxy looks good and smooth. I'm splitting the inner compartment in three using pocket screws. The middle will hold the mechanism and motor. The mechanism I have comes with a piston. I don't need it here, so I'll put it aside. A piston can be hard to pull out, so the trick is to use a quick grip clamp. And I'll be attaching two of those to the middle compartment. So this is the linear motor or actuator that I'll be using to open and close the table. I need to find a way to link the motor to the mechanism. So I'm making a wooden structure that will be pushed by the motor, then lift the mechanism. This piece of metal is from an old barn hinge and it's really, really sturdy. It will be the link between the wooden structure and the lifting mechanism. A quick test with just the wooden structure, then with the lifting mechanism. 
It kind of worked, but there is too much friction, and I'll show you how I fix it later on. Usually, when working with electronics, it's always a good habit to wear an ESD safety strap and to ground yourself to avoid damaging a component with electrostatic discharge. To control the motor, I'll be using an Arduino Nano for the logic and a TV6612 full bridge to drive the motor. I mostly chose this driver for its size and current output which can peak at 3.2 amps. I'm using some headers like that in the future, if a component fails, it will be easy to replace it. If you want to learn more about the Arduino, I'll suggest you to check out DroneBot Workshop channel. He explains everything from beginner to advanced in a way that is very easy to understand. I usually like to design my own PCBs using EasyEDA and ordering them through GLC PCB. But this time, I'll just use a cheap prototype PCB board. That also means more soldering to make all the connections. I've added way more connectors than I actually needed because I originally also wanted to add an RFID sensors to open a secret compartment, but in the end, I've changed my mind. Those metallic pins are a mix of leftover legs of LEDs, resistors, capacitors, and more, all from Pruitt's project. And they are pretty handy to make PCB path. This is the code I uploaded to the Arduino. You can also find it in the description. Okay, now I need to make a bunch of holes for a power outlet, two hidden wireless charger, and a button. I decided to go with just the barebone wireless charger module with free codes which expands its charging area. So this is the wooden structure that is pushed by the motor, and the problem is that it makes too much friction. So to fix this, I decided to throw it away and use drawer slides instead. They are very cheap, like you can get, you can get 10 for 10 bucks, and they do slide well. Some lock tight just to prevent bolts to get too loose. Here I'm removing some materials at the back and front of the table to give enough clearance for the tabletop to move forward and up in the same time, otherwise it will get stuck. The bevels I made earlier was not enough, so this also means that I need to add strips of wood to the tabletop. It won't look as good as before, but at least it will work perfectly. 
this little box with magnets will hold all the electronics. I originally wanted to put everything in the model compartment, but I couldn't fit everything. This box will be attached under the coffee table. The power for the coffee table will come from this plug. I'm putting my PCB into a plastic container to avoid any type of shortcuts. I'm gonna hide the USB cable for the phone charger with this corner wall wood stripe. Now it's time to put some stain. Ideally, it would have been much better to dismantle everything and stain each part one by one, but uh, kind of got lazy here. These two pieces here are just to hold the charger. For the tabletop, I'll be waxing it and also polishing it off camera. The wax will make it easy to wash any food stain and will also make it water resistant. And lastly, I just added the cover to hide the middle compartment. Et voilà, that's it for today. I really hope that you enjoyed that video. I really want to give a huge thanks uh, to the channel Custom 3x3 Tamar. Um, so I'm not sure if you, I'm saying her name right, but Tamar uh, actually figured out how to make those uh, angle joints here uh, using three pieces of wood. She explains it very well. It's just uh, two simple cuts. Uh, you should check out her video and actually check out her channel. We'll definitely put a link of her channel in the description. So go and check it out. Uh, she is very smart and she's an amazing woodworker. You will definitely not be disappointed by her work. If you like that video or if you like what we do, please, please subscribe to our channel. Leave a comment if you like. I would love to hear what your thought on that table. If you liked it, well, like that video. Uh, that will be super cool and that will be super helpful too. If you want to see daily updates on our future projects, uh, feel free to follow us on Instagram. You'll see all the links in the description. And then that's it. Um, I really hope to see you soon. And um, au revoir. Have a nice one.